Those that follow this channel will know that I've tried just about every e-ink tablet at this point. And after a bit of bouncing around, I settled on the Remarkable 2 as the device that I daily drive professionally. But for the past six weeks, I've been exclusively using the Supernote A6 X2 Nomad. So how is it? What is it like to live with it for multiple months? And do I still feel the same way about it now that the honeymoon period is over? And stick around to the end to see if it can replace my beloved Remarkable 2 as my daily driver. Let's dig into it. Today's video is brought to you by me. If you're new around here on this channel, I share workflow tools and tips to improve your thinking, focus, and creativity. And if you're looking at the A6X2, you clearly care about your focus. And I do too. And that's why I started Finding Focus, an email newsletter where I share with you my reflections from the past week to give you one thought and one tool to improve your focus and creativity. We've got a link in the description below where you can join completely for free. And I hope to see you there. All right, on to the video. So what should you expect when you first get the Supernote A6X2? Well, let's start with build quality. This one feels decidedly more premium than the A5X. And I think a major aspect of that is the part that you feel, which is the folio, which I absolutely love. It's thicker than the old folio and it feels significantly more substantial in hand. In the past, I've said I think the Supernote is the best device for on-the-go carry, and I think the new Folio makes this the type of item that's a joy to carry around all day. With that said, the white one is going to get dirty, so if that's something that bothers you, definitely go for the blue one. I personally like the Patina, but your mileage may vary. Note that they made the loop bigger this time around, so that they can have the same Folio options for both Lamy and non Lamy pens. This pen isn't going anywhere, but that loop definitely feels a little on the big side. With that said, if you start with a standard pen and later decide you want to switch to a Lamy, you don't have to buy an entirely new folio. The way the new folio attaches is improved as well. Before there was this groove in the back of the device and the folio slid into that, it held really well, but it meant that you had to commit to using the folio. The new design uses these two beefy magnets and it holds extremely well. Now, when you want to take it out of the folio, you can do so easily. And when you're ready to put it back in, putting it back in is equally easy. Nice job. Other improvements include a new user replaceable battery, which means if you daily drive this for multiple years and the battery no longer holds a charge, you can swap it out with a completely new battery instead of having to trash the entire device. On our way to writing feel, let's talk about the new standard pen. The guts of it are all the same, so you have that same ceramic stylus that should never need replacing. They've just wrapped it in a new retractable pen body. I really like it. I think it fits well with the on-the-go usability of a Nomad device. The pen feels good. It's well-balanced. It's neither heavy nor light, and I think it's something that most people will really enjoy. Note that it does have a slight rattle if you're sensitive to that sort of thing. This caught my eye when I first got it, but overall it doesn't ruin the experience for me. Not to mention, it also doubles as a very satisfying fidget device. None of that matters though if it doesn't feel good to write with, which was my primary gripe with the A5X. I'm happy to report that the new Feelwrite 2 film solves the bogging down issue that bogged down my enjoyment of the original device. It still has a softer feel than the Remarkable 2 or the Note Air 3C, leaning more to a ballpoint pen on notebook feel instead of the pencil on paper feel of the other two devices. Which one of those two you find satisfying will ultimately come down to your own personal preference. With that said, I have no concerns with writing on this one and it gets the Brandon Boswell excellent writing experience stamp of approval. That's not a thing. Yeah. This device is an A6 size, which for those Americans watching is about an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper folded in half. It's a bit on the small size when it comes to deep writing sessions, but it's an excellent size for anyone writing on the go. If you commute to work, I think any of the e-ink devices will work just fine. This one is especially nice if you're particularly mobile throughout your day. So if you bounce between multiple rooms or need a device that'll be easy to keep with you at all times, this is that one. I mentioned that this device is small and physically speaking, it definitely is. However, when writing, it feels much bigger than its actual physical dimensions. And this is due to an excellent implementation of landscape mode. What I mean by that is the Supernote has a built-in accelerometer and can detect when it's turned but also the software implementation of this is especially good. I can get about the same writing width on this device turned landscape that I can on a portrait oriented Remarkable. And the beauty here is that it's all completely seamless. 
If I want to review things I've written in the past, then portrait orientation works great. And if I want to write something new, landscape is usually how I do it. The Remarkable definitely has support for landscape mode, but there's no accelerometer and you mostly have to commit to one orientation or the other. The A6X2 makes it where you don't have to choose. So what's it like to actually live with it? Well, it's lovely. Rada's attention to detail in the Supernote software is clear and evident. And that software is shared across all of their devices. So to hear more about the specifics of the software, I'd recommend you check out the A5X review. But for now, here are the highlights. It starts with great quality of life touches that keep you focused on the task at hand. If you mess up, you can swipe with the sidebar to undo or swipe in the other direction to redo. If you made a mistake a while back, you can hold with two fingers and draw to make a selection. And it's this level of control that I think makes this the best ink device for long lived documents like journals or planners. If you're a person who carries a traditional planner, this is an easy replacement and in many ways is an upgrade to your paper planner. You can draw a selection and make that a heading that's available from a table of contents. You can draw a star to make a to-do list item and see all of those in one centralized place and a bunch of other things that I can't get into because I don't want this video to be an hour long. Supernote has the best real-time recognition format of all of the e-ink devices, which is nice if you want to have a long-lived document on the device and be able to search for when you referenced a keyword. You can have a hundred page document and as long as you know the word you're looking for, you can search for it and find the exact reference on the exact day that you wrote it. If you're looking for more focus, you can also double tap to hide the toolbar or the entire UI, which is really nice when you're just looking for a little bit more focus. There's also great offline file sharing and screen sharing, and there's no subscription necessary anywhere. You can use the Supernote cloud completely for free, or if you'd prefer, you can use Google Drive or Dropbox if you don't want another service with access to your data. It also has native support for custom templates, which the Remarkable currently lacks. And lastly, not that this really comes into play, but the Supernote has 32 gigabytes of storage where the Remarkable 2 only has eight. But with that said, no device is perfect. So let's go through some of the things that I think you should be aware of and some things that I'd love to see Rada adjust in the future. You should be aware that the hey, Supernote Google does not have any office, form please. of light. So you are BYOL. This is a conscious decision from Rada in order to minimize the distance between the pen tip and the display to make the writing experience feel more authentic. But I'm hopeful that these three dots on the back could drive a light accessory in the future. Maybe, we'll see. Another thing that I've bumped up against is sometimes you write and the stroke doesn't immediately show. If you keep writing, it will show, but it definitely makes you double take and it will definitely throw off new users for a bit. The other thing I'd love to see change is there's no support for Android apps, despite this being an Android based tablet. The Kindle app that comes pre-installed on the Supernote is an Android app, and I'd love to be able to put my own apps on the device. Actually, a community member recently learned how to use Android Debug Bridge, ADB, to install apps over USB, and Supernote actually blocked it with a software update. They said that they blocked it due to security reasons, but I hope that this means that true support for this is coming in the not too distant future. I followed up with the Supernote team and they indicated that they plan to officially support sideloading Android apps before the end of 2024. Fingers crossed. The biggest omission for me is no vertical scrolling, which is my favorite feature from the Remarkable, because in the digital world, there's no need for these artificial page breaks. I should be able to continue an idea with as much space as it needs. I chatted with the Supernode team about this, and at least as of right now, they don't have any plans to add this. Enough with the cons. Who is this device for? I think it's especially good for those who want one device that they can always have with them. I think this is the perfect size to carry with you throughout the day and for people who are on the go. It's also excellent for anyone who currently uses a paper planner and is looking for something similar in an e-ink form. So who is it not for? I don't think it's great for artists who need a large working space, and I don't think it's great for those who need or want color. For instance, if you're a big comic book reader, then one of the color books devices is probably a better fit. In conclusion, the Supernote A6X2 Nomad is fantastic. They've taken what made the previous Supernote great and streamlined and refined the hell out of it. And most importantly, they made it an enjoyable writing experience, which was my biggest issue with the Supernote A5X. If its A6 size works for you, then I have zero hesitation in recommending you go out and purchase this device. As for me, will this be replacing my Remarkable? Hmm. 
Although I think the A6X2 feels like a tablet much bigger than its physical size, I still miss having a full-size writing space, and for that reason, I'll be sticking with my Remarkable 2. But I don't think I'll be able to say that same thing when the inevitable A5X2 is released. Thanks for sticking around. I really appreciate you watching. Subscribe so that you don't miss out on future videos to improve your thinking and focus. And you can help me out a ton by liking this video so YouTube will share it with others. If you want to learn more about the Supernote ecosystem, go check out my original review of the Supernote A5X. I go into way more depth on the Supernote software itself. And I think that's a major highlight of the device. I'll see you there. And until next time, cheers.